folks. So I'm going to try and teach you a little bit about Tacticus here in the first couple of minutes. It's not that hard of a game to play if you're already familiar with miniature games or card games like Magic the Gathering and, and similar such. Um, you do start with your miniatures on your side of the board, and you start with your summoner in play. Um, and to make these miniatures, I just used a circle one-inch cut hole puncher. Uh, you can get that at Hobby Lobby, you can get it on Amazon.com, and it's just one inch cut, and then pasted it onto some wood chips that I also bought from Hobby Lobby. Um, these are one inch circles, birch discs. They're like $1.50 for 12 of them. Um, you do start with your summoner card off to the side. I put it in a different color sleeve so it doesn't get mixed in with the deck, as well as your mercenary cards. You don't start with any of these in play. There are different cards that, that you put them in the play. Um, so you just got to have these on the side so that you know and keep track of what the, you know what they are, and you can keep track of their hit points. Uh, the way you keep track of hit points with everything, just a dry erase marker. You rub it off real easy with your, your thumb or a napkin or paper or whatever. Um, you can get these five for a dollar at a dollar store. So that's probably the cheapest place you can possibly get it. Um, start off with the game. Took all the cards, download them off the internet, used a generic CCG card game. Um, wow, magic or anything like that. Uh, just some cheap cards that I didn't need. Put them in the sleeve and put my print out and cut out on top of it. So now I can shuffle the deck and play. So you're going to start by drawing a hand of 10 cards. And you can mulligan. The mulligan lets you put any number of cards on the bottom of your deck and draw off the top of your deck to try and create a better hand. What I'm really looking for though is mostly the fact that I can play some stuff early in the game. So I'll just sort them out here by color a little bit for you and show you some of the cards and why they matter. Now the casting cost, what it costs to play the card, is just below the name. It includes the color, a number, and an exclamation point. The exclamation point means that I can't play this card until I own enough resources of that color to play them. So this guy has one exclamation point. I have to have a gold card in my resource before I can play him. If I had two exclamation points, I'd have to have two gold cards over there. Um, so, pretty good starting hand. I've got some early drops. I'm just going to run through it like that. Any card in my hand can become a resource. So this, there are no designated resource cards. You're basically giving up a card, and it becomes permanently a resource. So this guy's going to go over to my resource row, play him upside down, or just keep him off to the side so that you know he's not a normal guy. Now I start my turn. I draw a card, actually I draw a card, then I play a resource, and now I can activate my summoner, I can cast spells, I can do it in any order. Um, so for example, this spell costs zero to play and puts a dwarf mercenary token into play. So I can play that there, and I can still move one, two, three, and play another character. So I'll use up my resource, you can tap it, you can exhaust it, you can put a token on top of it to show that it's been used. Whichever way is going to help you keep track of it. Play your resource. When you summon guys, you summon them adjacent to your summoner. Now remember, adjacent means orthogonal. And I have a wall here, so I can't summon here. And this is diagonal, so I can't summon there. That's near me, but not adjacent in terms of game terms. So this square is where I'll summon him. My opponent's starting off over there. I'm going to try and meet him up in the middle here. 